Hello there, this is Nico, and you're watching Parry This. Today we will be taking a peek at another night of King Arthur's Round Table. We've already covered three of the most famous knights in Sir Lancelot, Sir Gawain, and Sir Galahad. And if you haven't seen those videos, I recommend checking them out, as they contain tons of valuable information. But today we are talking about Sir Geraint the Valiant, a high-ranking member of Arthur's court. And while being relatively unknown outside of the Arthurian community, he has an interesting story and history behind him. So let's dive on in and get to know Sir Geraint. Sir Geraint or Geraint, depending how you ask, is the eldest son of King Urban of Dumnonia. He was a knight of Devonshire. After the end of Roman rule in Britain in about 410, the kingdom of Dumnonia emerged covering Devon or Devonshire, Cornwall, and Somerset. Based on the former Roman Cavitas and named after the pre-Roman Dumnoni, the Roman episcopal structure survived in this land, and shortly before 705, Oldhelm, the abbot of Malmesbury, wrote a letter to King Geraint of Dumnonia and his bishops. This land would be one of the first lands settled by the Anglo-Saxons from Wessex, but Britain families would remain in power for a long time in Devon, and would retain control by wedding Saxons. But the character of Sir Geraint is almost certainly derived from a historical person that lived prior to the Saxon conquest, and actually combated the Saxons. Sir Geraint lived well into his adult life as a prince and a knight in Devon. He is noted to have fought in several wars in the service of his father, the king, and governed his estates successfully for years. During this time he marries, but does not have any children. Unfortunately, his wife dies shortly after their marriage, and Sir Geraint leaves his home out of grief and a thirst for adventure. In his travels, he comes to King Arthur's court, where he then decides to spend much of his time. This decision is based out of his desire for action and adventure. One of his first adventures includes a character known as the Sparrow Hawk Knight, otherwise known as Edern Ap Nud in Welsh, or simply Sir Edern. In the tale, Geraint, son of Urban, which is a Welsh adaptation of Chrétien de Troyes' romance Eric et Enid, Sir Edern, the Sparrow Hawk Knight, plays a prominent role. In this story, Sir Geraint, along with Lady Guinevere and one of her handmaidens, comes across the Sparrow Hawk Knight, who is traveling with a beautiful lady, and a whip-wielding dwarf. Dwarf. Guinevere sends her handmaiden to discover the identity of the knight who is traveling in secret, but when she approaches the camp, she is rebuked by the dwarf and then is even struck by his whip while being driven off. After this, Sir Geraint goes to investigate the situation, but is also rebuked and struck. Sir Geraint spares the dwarf as he is not a worthy opponent and then he returns to Guinevere. Seeking his adversary, Sir Geraint heads to a walled town, where a great tournament is annually held. Sir Adern, the champion of the cha uh, tournament for the last two years, challenges Sir Geraint to a joust. Initially, Sir Adern has the upper hand, but by the end of the duel, he suffers vicious wounds at Sir Geraint's hand, and begs for mercy. Sir Geraint allows Sir Adern to keep his life on the condition that he rides to King Arthur's court to make amends for his insult, to himself and to Lady Guinevere. Sir Adern accepts these conditions and reveals his name to his rival. Sir Adern later rides to Arthur's court where his apology is accepted by Guinevere. Heavily injured, he is treated by Morgan Tudd, the chief physician at the court. Upon his recovery, he is chosen to accompany Sir Geraint on a quest to the kingdom of Sir Geraint's father, King Erbin. Geraint and Enid, also known by the title Geraint, son of Urban, is analogous to Chrétien de Troyes' 12th century poem Eric and Enid. Some scholars think the two derive from a common lost source, while others believe that Geraint is based directly or indirectly on Eric. It survives in the White Book of Ryderick and the Red Book of Hergust, both from the 14th century. In any case, when dealing with the character of Sir Geraint, you will often find that certain Arthurian stories will refer to the same character in the same stories as Sir Eric, or simply Eric. In any case, we're talking about the same person. The romance concerns the love of Sir Geraint, one of King Arthur's most valiant men, and the beautiful Enid. Sir Geraint courts Enid. The couple marry and settle down together, but rumors spread that Sir Geraint has gone soft. Unfortunately, the basis of these rumors was Enid's tendency towards gossip and of course her love of talking too much. Upset about this, Enid cries to herself that she is not a true wife for keeping her husband from his chivalric duties. But Sir Geraint misunderstands her and takes her comments to mean that she has been unfaithful to him. Sir Geraint decides to go on a quest to prove he is still a chivalrous knight. 
and agrees to take Enid with him under the understanding that she will not speak at all during the entire quest. Lady Enid unfortunately breaks this vow of silence three times during the quest. The first time Enid speaks is to warn Sir Geraint that two bandits are lurking in the bushes planning to ambush them. She calls out and Sir Geraint is able to defeat them handily, disarming one, taking his club, and knocking them both unconscious with it. He then takes their weapons, such as they were, and throws them into a nearby river. Sir Geraint spares them and gives them a few coins to live off of until they are able to set themselves up in an honest way of life. Later, the two are traveling along when they are confronted by a knight in the middle of the road bidding them to halt. Lady Enid looks around and sees that there are two more knights hiding in the woods behind them and warns Sir Geraint. Sir Geraint spurs his horse with a lance in hand and unhorses the first knight in time to turn and face the others who are on foot. He defeats them both with the sword. These knights had the intention of robbing the couple and taking their horses as they only had one pack horse between the three of them. As payment for their deeds, Sir Geraint claims from them their swords and their one horse and sets them walking from the scene unarmed and on foot. The final event takes place when Enid learns of a neighboring king who discovered Sir Geraint's quest and decided to capture him and hold him for ransom. Enid sneaks into the enemy encampment where she learns that the king has an army of 100 knights with him and that they intend to take Sir Geraint captive the following morning. She spreads rumors in the camp that Sir Geraint is protected by a sorcerer and that he cannot be harmed by mortal men and that he wields an enchanted sword that can slice through armor like a hot knife through butter. During the night, the rumors spread through the camp and 25 of the knights quietly pack up their things and abandon the king out of fear. Enid returns to Sir Geraint's camp before morning, warning him about the king's plan. In the morning, Sir Geraint dons his armor and waits at the top of a nearby hill. By the time the king's army is within sight, there are less than 50 knights, as more slowly slipped away during the march. Sir Geraint immediately spurs his horse and charges at the oncoming army. The king charges forward, but every single one of his remaining knights turns and flees out of fear. Sir Geraint defeats the king and delivers him to his father, who imprisons him. In the end of this story, Sir Geraint has proved that he has not gone soft and that he is still a chivalrous adventurer. Although chastising Enid three times for speaking during their quest, he recognizes that he does care more for her than adventure, and also thanks her for saving his life. He agrees to place her first, and she agrees to speak less and not to gossip anymore. With their relationship mended and Sir Geraint's reputation solidified, they return home and go on to inherit Sir Geraint's father's kingdom upon his death, and they become king and queen of Domnonia for many years. It is said that Sir Geraint inherited the Domnonian throne in 480 AD, and is recorded as one of the great fleet owners of post-Roman Britain. This coming from the fact that his strategic position and his large naval fleet made him one of, if not the most powerful ocean kings of England at this point in time. His castle was once called Caer Garel, or Fort of the Ship, as it would often be surrounded by numerous war vessels at dock. According to an old Welsh poem called Elegy for Geraint, Sir Geraint died fighting the Saxons with King Arthur at the Battle of Longborth around the year 510. This is said to have been some time after marrying Lady Enid. The timeline puts that at about 20 years after their marriage, so I would say it checks out. During this battle, Sir Geraint is said to have been King Arthur's second in command. He led a sea battle against Saxon forces, utterly crushing the Saxon ships, and destroying their fleet which had attempted a blockade. Sir Geraint then landed his forces to reinforce King Arthur. Sir Geraint helped organize the new forces into three divisions, two of heavy infantry and one of light cavalry. King Arthur placed Sir Geraint in command of the infantry divisions in control of the army center, and King Arthur commanded the cavalry as was his wont. In the end, the Britons were victorious, in no small part to Sir Geraint's brilliant command and personal valor. However, Sir Geraint was mortally wounded and died shortly after the battle. Sir Geraint is not featured much in modern media, and when he is, is often referred to as Sir Eric based on Chrétien de Troyes' original story. He appears briefly in the BBC series Merlin, where he organizes the defense of Camelot in King Arthur's absence. For a light take on the story of Geraint and Enid, look to Gerald Morris's book The Adventures of Sir Givret the Short. In this short book, Geraint appears as Sir Eric, and you're able to see the story of Geraint and Enid through the eyes of another character in Sir Gavret the Short, who follows behind them witnessing the events firsthand. I also recommend reading the original source material for both the stories of Geraint and Enid and the Sparrowhawk Knight of which English versions can be found for free online. Well, that just about does it for this character that most people have never even heard of. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it to be both educational and entertaining. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day, and I'll see you next time.